What's up, everybody? As we've been talking about these past several weeks, we are experiencing a very mixed housing market that can differ greatly depending on where you live. Some are experiencing a seller's market, while others are experiencing a buyer's market. But there is one clear winner regardless of your location. So today, we're going to take a look at that winner and see what that means for the future of the housing market. So let's dive right in. This is definitely the weirdest housing market I've ever experienced in the 20 years I've been a realtor. Where I am in the DC area, it's a seller's market, at least for those houses that are priced right and show well. Prices are still going up, even higher than from the peak during the pandemic boom. But in places like Boise and Reno, it's a buyer's market as homes are seeing price drops week after week. So today we'll look at two articles, one from Yahoo Finance titled, There's a clear winner in today's housing market. Hint, it's not the buyer. And Lance Lambert's latest article in Fortune, where he interviews Ali Wolf, the chief economist at Zonda, on the housing market, titled, The Housing Market Recession is Over in the New Home Space, top economist Ali Wolf said. But she's hesitant on what comes next, and we'll see what they're saying. And as always, I'll chime in with my opinion as well. In Yahoo's article by Danny Romero, Gabriela Cruz Martinez, and Jana Heron, they declare a winner of today's housing market. And it's not the home buyers who are dealing with high interest rates and very little inventory. It's not the sellers because they're staying where they are rather than downsizing or upsizing because they don't want to trade in their low interest rate to then go buy something with a much higher one. It's the home builders. Confidence amongst builders finally pushed into positive territory this month. The first time in 11 months, according to the National Association of Home Builders. There is so little inventory available on the resale side that it's pushing buyers to pay the premium for new as compared to resale because there just isn't a lot out there that's desirable for them. KB Home Chairman, President, and CEO Jeff Mesner said this week on the Builders Investors Call. So we're pretty pleased. KB Home is one of several home builders that turned in better than expected quarterly earnings. Pulte, Toll Brothers, and Lennar are also in that same pack. Single family housing starts jumped 18.5% in May from April to a seasonally adjusted rate of 997,000, according to government data released this week. And building permits for single family home construction rose to a seasonally adjusted annual rate of 897,000 units, up 4.8% from April. We have not seen that level in the 10 years prior to the pandemic. Lawrence Yoon, the chief economist at the National Association of realtors told Yahoo Finance. So builders are ramping up, their profits are turning in, and there's a financial incentive to produce more. Could this be the answer to our inventory problem? Fortune did a Q&A with Ali Wolf, the chief economist at Zonda, who advises the White House on housing matters when she's not traveling around the world speaking to home builders, yet her opinion on the future of the housing market. When asked if she thinks that the worst is behind them since home builder confidence is up and new home sales are rising. She said that when the market started to correct last spring into fall, quick move in inventory, new homes that can be moved into within 90 days started to build up. This made builders really nervous that the housing market had turned and they started to offer discounts and incentives to try to move their product as standing inventory can be a liability when the market slows down. She remarks that the buyers did reach turn to the market on the lower prices and incentives, which changed sentiment on the market. Instead of thinking that the housing market was crashing, people started to see that there were deals available, which helped encourage those on the sidelines to re-enter the market. As such, the housing market in 2023 so far has far exceeded their expectations. As for the future, she says that home builders are cautiously optimistic. Some are still nervous about broader macro considerations. But many do feel good that housing demand has held 
held up despite 6.5% to 7% interest rates. Fortune then asked Wolf if builders will start to pull back on incentives and mortgage rate buy downs since sales are on the up. She said that since the middle of last year, the majority of home communities have offered incentives to help sweeten the deal for consumers. These incentives range from help with closing costs to funds for options. And the most effective incentive when it comes to housing affordability is the mortgage rate buy down. And this is really interesting, especially if you're thinking about buying new construction, because she clarifies that mortgage rate buy downs can come in two forms. Builders can offer an adjustable rate mortgage where the builder offers the consumer a mortgage with a low interest rate in the first year that progressively goes higher over typically three to five years. And option two is when builders offer a 30 year fixed rate buy down. This is more costly to the builder, but it does ensure that the buyer has a fixed rate for the duration of the loan. Both of these options are really important in today's housing market because they just make buying a home more affordable. Wolf told Fortune that with higher sales so far this year, builders have been less generous with incentives than in the past. At the end of last year, incentives were almost guaranteed. Today, we're seeing incentives being offered more on a case-by-case -case basis. Next, Fortune asked Wolf about the future of home prices. After falling for seven straight months, U.S. home prices, as measured by the seasonally adjusted Case Schiller National Home Price Index, rose in February and March. Does that mean the U.S. home prices have now finally bottomed? Or do downside risks still remain? Where does she see home prices heading from here? Wolf answered that objectively. The housing recession in the new home space is over. Home sales are rising, home starts are rising, and home sale prices are rising again. When asked if it's gonna continue to go up from here, she responded that there are still broader economic concerns that could impact housing demand, including potential turmoil following the Federal Reserve's restrictive policy, a significant pullback in consumer spending, or even the fallout from commercial real estate sector. They are watching closely to see if there's a double dip recession in housing, or if demographic supported demand is enough to withstand wider issues. And finally, when asked why we are seeing such a mixed market across our country, Wolf explains that the difference in payment to income ratios across our country has created this bifurcated market. Parts of the West had already stretched payment to income ratios before the pandemic, meaning home buyers were already putting a sizable amount of their income towards housing each month. The ratios were way healthier in the Midwest and Southeast. So as home prices rose, the stretched market became unsustainable for consumers, resulting in a home price correction to better align fundamentals. The Midwest and Southeast still offer relative affordability, especially to those that have relocated to these markets. We suspect given the differences in affordability, employment, and migration, there will continue to be regional variation in housing performance. More inventory is needed across our country to create a more balanced market. I'm just not sure that new construction is enough to fill the gap to fix the affordability crisis. Back in 2008, foreclosures and short sales created the much needed inventory, which caused home prices to crash. Today, we are definitely seeing more foreclosures. In May of this year, ATTOM recorded a sharp uptick in foreclosure rates across the United States. The moratoriums for all COVID-19 programs have been lifted, which is causing more foreclosure inventory to come on the market. But so far, it's still below pre-pandemic levels. According to ATTOM, there were approximately 150,000 foreclosure filings in Q1 of 2019. Brian Whitman, owner and CEO of Silt Real Estate and Investments, told Yahoo Finance, there are still only roughly 100,000 in Q1 of 2023. It is a rise year over year of approximately 10%. It still doesn't appear to be the issue everyone thinks it will be. When asked when we should be concerned, Concern, Whitman answered that seeing a spike of 50% to approximately 150,000 foreclosures in one quarter would be a sign to worry and pay more attention. I think these next six to 12 months will definitely show us if the housing market will continue to recover and go up or if there'll be another correction.
correction and possible recession. Where I am, I'm still seeing a lot of new construction, but it's really expensive and the builders here are not offering a lot of incentives. And I'm still not seeing a lot of foreclosures. And the only houses that are really sitting on the market are those that are overpriced or just simply don't show well. Something's gotta give to make this a more balanced housing market and ultimately more affordable. I'm just not sure what that is at this point. But what about you guys? What are your thoughts? Is the housing market affordable where you live? Are you seeing any foreclosures? Is there a lot of new construction? And if so, are the builders offering good incentives? Definitely comment below, tell us where you live and tell us what you're seeing. It's the best way we can really understand what's happening across our country. Some industry experts believe our housing market is in serious trouble. If you didn't see my video on real estate billionaire Jeff Green and his warnings on the economy and the future of the housing market, definitely check that out next. Thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. Bye.